Hey guys, um, excited to be here. Got a big game this week. Um, this is uh, one of the most traditional rivalries in all of college football. I think anytime you talk about Georgia Auburn, you talk about rivalry. They've got a lot of kids uh, from our state. Uh, they recruit our state hard. There's a lot of ties between the two universities, always has been. Uh, it's been a big game. Um, never ever remember it being game two, that's for sure. Um, so that's very unique um, and that we'll be playing them pretty early. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of respect for their coordinators, Coach Steele, uh, Chad, um, both really good. You know, I think what Chad's done for their offense is uh, really shows on tape um, the ability to use their skill and get their skill players the ball um, from different locations. Uh, you can see it showing up already. And um, they've done a great job of that. Got a lot of respect for Gus and the organization he's put together. They've recruited well. They've got really good players, top 10 team in the country. Um, so it should be a great ball game, great atmosphere. Certainly wish we could have 93,000 there, um, but we won't be able to do that. So we'll do the best uh, we can with the crowd we got, and we'll need them to be loud. I thought that, the, that, that Arkansas's group was good and loud last week, and the atmosphere will be really good for that the, this week as well. So we're excited for that. Um, I know you guys will want to ask the quarterback question, and you'll want to ask it all week. All I can tell you is we're going to continue to work with all the guys we've got to put the best guy in there to give us the best opportunity to, uh, to win the football games. Um, DeWan did not play as, as bad as it seemed to some and thought he did some good things watching the tape. And he had some unfortunate uh, uh, bad breaks that happened while he was in at quarterback. Um, JT will be cleared, um, but I don't know how much that changes the picture in terms of uh, reps and development. We'll be looking at everybody across the board. Um, JT's got to be able to show us that he could function uh, efficiently and uh, and do it with a, with his knee, um, being able to do it. We always thought he would be cleared by this time anyway, but uh, those guys will all compete as well as Carson will too and continue to grow at the quarterback position. With that, I'll open it up. All right, let's take the first question, uh, Anthony Dasher. Hey, Coach. Uh, yeah, and you're right. I got a quarterback question right off the bat. Uh, but for, as far as testing performance, so kind of kind of what stood out the most, it looked like he did some of his better work when working against pressure. And one thing on JT, if you don't mind, and I can say he's going to get it clear, what were the hurdles Ron Corson was looking for him to overcome? Well, Ron would have to explain that in depth. If you're looking for percentage, strength index, biodex, testing, girth, his knee being closer to the same size as the other one. They do a, a single leg hop test. They measure his ability to move around on that knee compared to his other knee. And they've been looking for certain barometers uh, to be able to hit that, uh, that number. And uh, he was able to do that. So that's, that's very fortunate for him. But he's still got to be able to go out there and prove to us that he can do it uh, in the game-like situations and the practice-like situations. And um, that's not easy to do during the week at times. But I thought Stetson did a good job when he came in. He's played a lot of football. He had good composure. He handled the pocket well. Um, he handled the protections well. Uh, Stetson's seen a lot of football in his time. So uh, with the, the stuff he sees from our defense day in and day out, taking all the reps last year, uh, he was very calm and poised. And, and DeJuan did a lot of good things, guys. It's not, you know, it's not his fault a play got called back for holding. It's not his fault a guy missed a, a pickup on third down and, and he almost turned that into a first down. So he did a lot of good things uh, early on there and we just never could put good things back to back. Um, and every drive he had came to a stop for some reason or another. Chip Towers? Yeah, Coach, uh, on Dwan, uh, you, I, he took a big hit on the sideline uh, in the side of the head, and I saw you talk to him when he came over telling him that he needed to get down. I just wonder, you know, certainly with his situation, did, did, did that ding him a little bit, you know, because uh, uh, he seemed like to not play quite as well after that? No, actually it was the opposite. He was fired up. He was pumped. He, uh, he loves the game. He loves the competitive nature. And, he, he, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't like – he doesn't believe in getting down. He likes contact. And uh, I, I thought that was one of the highlights that he took that hit and that he kept going. You know, I think what got me a little bit was the awareness the next time. And he, he just – he missed the, the yard marker the next time on a third down where he had an opportunity to scramble for it and get the third down. He never saw – and that, that happens with a young quarterback. I remember – a uh, big game where Jake Fromm took off running on the third down. And he slid before the, the first down on third down, and I was so upset with him. But a lot of guys don't have the awareness to know exactly where that is on the sideline, and he just missed it. It had nothing to do with the hit that he took earlier. As a matter of fact, he was, he was pumped about the hit. He's been waiting two years to get hit, so he felt relieved. 
Seth, no. Emerson. Seth Emerson. Kirby, I wanted to ask about running backs and your evaluation there. Uh, obviously not a huge amount of breakaway runs. How do you think James and Zamir did? How much of it is them? How much of it is, is blocking? It's a combination of both. I thought there were uh, a couple things. First thing to have a great run, you got to have good box counts. You got to get hat on a hat. You got to make people miss. Um, I think all our backs got the ability to make people miss. They've got to do it at a higher level. We got to block much better on the second level in terms of our receivers cut off blocking and turning a couple 10, 12 yard runs into bigger runs, which we missed opportunities there. And we got to move people up front a little better. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it takes to be able to run the ball. But when you look across our league, I think you'll see, you show me a team that's running the ball uh, really, really well and efficiently. And it's hard to do in our league. You've got to be able to throw and catch the ball. You've got to be able to score points. And, you know, historically, we've been able to run the ball at a uh, good rate compared to a lot of people in our league. And we didn't do that Saturday. But there was, you know, it was one of those things where there were some, there were some holes, there were some things there that backs didn't necessarily miss. Sometimes the snap was bad. And when you've got a bad snap and it gets you off direction, you can't have that. You know, it takes a cumulative effect of everybody doing their job. And if one guy's off, one receiver doesn't cut off a safety, he turns, you know, what would be a 20-yard gain into a five-yard gain. If the snap's off, you go back and look, there's a couple times the snap's just off off key, and it brings the quarterback offline, and then it brings the running back offline. But you got to do a better job blocking and, uh, and running the ball. But I do think that uh, we've got the people to do that with. Mike Griffith? Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, coach, uh, question on how did you come out on the injury front in this football game? And uh, I didn't see Walter Grant on the participation chart, but I still see him on your roster. Can you update him, please? Yeah, uh, as far as the, the injuries go, um, nobody's substantially injured. Uh, a couple bumps and bruises, really the same bumps and bruises we had going into the game. Um, Jermaine uh, dinged his shoulder. I think he had to go, in the go out of the game uh, for a little bit, but he came back in and played. I think he'll be fine. Um, Harris got dinged up on the hit uh, there uh, when he got hit pretty good, but he stayed in for a couple more plays and came back. But we don't have anybody that uh, we think's out. Um, and in terms of Walter, when we feel like he can contribute, help us out, uh, he'll be able to. He's got to be able to help us out in uh, all the phases of the game to be able to play. Dean Leggy. Herbert, do you think that uh, you, you talked after the game about looking yourself in the mirror or the team needed to? Uh, have you changed expectations around here so that a 27 point win doesn't seem like a 27 point win sometimes? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't really get into that. I just look at the performance. I'm not the expectation of fan base and expectation of you guys is not what I'm trying to please. I'm trying to please these young men. And uh, I want them to be at their best. I want to do the best job for them as a staff. I want to put them in the best chance to be successful. That's, to me, what we're measured on is um, do we get the most out of these kids that we can and do we grow them? I'm really not into the perception or the outside world, what they think, because it probably doesn't matter uh, at the end of the day. There's so many naysayers out there. I, I'm worried about getting our team better. And uh, – we, we, it's never as good as it seems, and it's never as bad as it seems. And that was 100% evident watching that tape. The defense wasn't as good as it seemed, and offense wasn't bad as it seemed. So we got to do a good job of getting better. That's the only thing that matters. Ryan Dennis, Banner Harrell, you have a question? Hey, yeah, I froze up for a second there, sorry. Uh, Kirby, you mentioned the, uh, the game being earlier than normal. Um, I'm sure that's a lot to do with the, the odd year, but um, – the game is going to be moved from November to October in the first place. So I guess my question is how uh, different will it be playing uh, this early? And uh, were you supportive of that original move earlier in the season, uh, not given the COVID factor? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, my support or disgruntled, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it is what it is. I don't, I don't really care when we play, who we play. It's who we play that I care about. And um, we got Auburn this week. So I'm excited because I think they got a really good football team. And, you know, two months ago, three months ago, we didn't know if we were even going to have this game. So I'm certainly excited that we are and our kids get an opportunity to play in uh, an electric environment. Uh, Paul Newberry, you have a question? Hey, Kirby, how you doing? Good. Uh, Back to the quarterbacks, does it um, 
do you worry at all or would you like to kind of I assume you want to get that sort of nailed down you don't want to go through the whole season as you say where that's an, an issue how, how important is it to kind of lock that down of who, of who the quarterback is for the season well it's a lot more important how we play around him and how we support him because whoever is able to do that the best and get the most out of the people around them is probably going to be the guy that moves the ball and produces and at the end of the day that's what we want to do if, if that's one guy if that's two guys we're not, we're not putting ourselves in a pigeonhole and saying we can only have one quarterback. We, we've got to develop uh, all our quarterbacks. So I know y'all are looking at it in terms of Auburn right now, who's going to play, what's the quarterback, where we're trying to look at our entire roster and say, okay, how are we going to be the best we can be in week two, three, four, five, six down the line? Because there's some guys on our team that are going to be better down the line than maybe the guy in front of them. But the only way they're going to get there is through playing. So there's a, there's a, you know, big part of making that decision that goes into that. And um, I'm not going to sit here and say we can't play multiple guys or it's got to be one guy. I certainly think it's easier when it's one guy in terms of the continuity with your team and things like that. But we've got to do what gives us the best chance to win. And that's what we're going to continue to do as coaches. Jed May, you have a question? Um, hi, Kirby. Yeah, um, you, mentioned, you, you mentioned the quarterbacks and sort of juggling the reps throughout this game week. How, I guess, more difficult does that make things when you're – sort of evaluating them throughout the game week as opposed to, you know, the preseason when you don't have another opponent to prepare for? Yeah, I, I didn't say we would juggle the, the, the game reps. I'm not, I'm not ready to say that we're going to do that. We're going to get the guys prepared. We think it gives us the best chance to win. Um, there's a lot of reps out there when you have ones, twos, and threes, and you're able to get a lot of work. So we're going to get work, but we're not going to have a juggling and doing it. You don't have – enough reps to put four different guys in there with the ones and get them reps. The reps they get in development wise will come sometimes with the twos and threes. Uh, Zach Klein, you have a question? Yeah, Bo Nix coach has the second longest active streak in the country behind Trevor without throwing a pick. Is that a product of a lot of dink and dunks or you see him the ability to kind of sling it all over the field? No, he's got a vertical passing game now. He's got a great arm. Uh, he makes really good decisions. I mean, I think the, 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 not the dink and dunk, it's the decision-making he has that gives him the opportunity to, to not throw picks. Smart quarterbacks avoid picks because they don't throw into situations that are adverse. And uh, he's got a really good set of receivers. When you talk about experience in an SEC with the guys they've got at wide out, I mean, those guys seem like they've been playing there forever. Um, you know, Seth's one of the best there is. Eli Stowe's been there forever, and we know how fast Schwartz is. They've got a lot of good wide outs uh, in terms of their skill set on offense. So he's got guys to protect him around it. And, you know, he's a coach's son that's been around the game his whole life. He knows good decisions, and he's a really good athlete. People don't understand how good a runner he actually is. Jake Rowe? Yeah, Kirby, I wanted to ask you about the center situation. We saw Warren uh, Erickson kind of rotate in there in some meaningful minutes, and you don't normally see a lot of rotation at center. What was kind of the thinking behind that, and, and did it have something to do with maybe Trey's snapping issues, having a, kind of a, a couple bad ones in the last two games? Yeah, it's it's not, the offensive line is not a limelight position, but you know you, everybody writes a story about Dewan and Stetson. They don't talk about the O line very often, but that's been going on all camp. That's not something that we haven't done. We think uh, Trey gives us a lot of flexibility at guard. Uh, we think Warren gives us flexibility at center and the ability to play guard, which he did in the bowl game. Um, he provides Trey some conditioning relief when you're in a COVID year and you're not quite as in a good a shape as you normally are. And, and Trey, we think, plays a really good guard. In a lot of ways, Trey can play guard and create more power than Warren can in terms of uh, strength and, and weight and body weight. So he's able to relieve Ben and Schaefer and give them a blow and, and not have a drop off at center. So we'll continue to work that route and uh, play the best guys, give us the best chance to win. Uh, Mark Schleybaugh, do you have a question? Hey, Kirby. Um, I read that uh, Richard LeCount had kind of urged you to sign Stetson back in high school. Can you, do you remember that at all? Can you share that story? No, I mean, he, well, first of all, we didn't sign Stetson initially, right? He was a walk on. Are you talking about when he came back or are you talking about out of high school? I'm confused. Out of Pierce County High School. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I never heard that story. I never remember that coming up. I, we watched Stetson a lot and thought a lot of him and he had the scholarship offers and, uh, you know, he was what we called a recruited walk on. We, we recruited him. We brought him on official visit and, um, 
and we wanted uh, Stetson to come here and develop. And he did a really good job that fr freshman year. He didn't get a lot of competitive reps. He got all the scout team reps. He did a great job. But, I mean, maybe Richard's taking credit for that. I don't know. But I never remember Richard telling me uh, to go after Stetson. Uh, it was more of a – Stetson was a really good football player that we wanted to join our team. He was a great academic student, so we knew – he would be able to get into Georgia and uh, he did an awesome job while he was here. He just didn't feel like in the spring with Justin and Jake that he was going to get the opportunity needed. And that's what, that's when he decided to go to uh, Mississippi. Thank you. Oh, uh, Vance Levy. Kirby, uh, by and large, it looked like a great solid day for the special teams. Uh, did you see enough in camp to, to feel good about it going into the first game? But then on the flip side, did the tape show some stuff that maybe some, some folks didn't see? Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't exactly ecstatic about the special teams. I thought that we missed uh, some opportunities there. We left some things out there that were there. Uh, we didn't handle a couple situations well. We had to burn a timeout. Um, so I was not pleased with that. Now, statistically, you can look at it and say, well, you're crazy because you did this, 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 this. I mean, we've got an experienced punter who punted the ball well, and some really competitive gunners that we worked all offseason on being a better pin the, pin the team inside the 10. And those, those reps showed. Um, we were very fortunate to have those, those reps show. The return game, I thought we left some out there. You know, I thought that uh, maybe, you know, if we block a little better, or maybe we return a little better, we score a touchdown on that. And, you know, with a young offense, you've got to ignite it through special teams. And we work really hard on that. And we take a lot of pride in that. And we were probably a little ahead of Arkansas in terms of the level of skill players that were out there. They're still in the process of recruiting guys and getting guys out there. We were probably better than them. But when you look at Auburn, which I've done all morning and all afternoon yesterday, they have all their starters, all their best players on special teams. It's going to be a competitive war on special teams because they've got really good special teams players. Uh, Austin Roper, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, hey, Kirby. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, the defense, after, like, you know, giving it, <clears throat> giving it a second look, that the defense didn't do as well as you, um, you initially thought. In what areas or ways are you talking about as regards to the defense? Good question. You know, the biggest thing is we had some mental bust that they didn't expose us on. You know, things that if you're sitting there watching, you're going, okay, we didn't do that right. We didn't handle that well. And someone's going to maybe with better players will be able to expose us um, mistakes that were made, communication errors. One side's playing one thing, another side's playing another. We're not on the same page. I mean, typically they're early in the season mistakes, and they're one play away from being a big play, which we saw the explosive play that, that happened. Um, certainly could have been more of those if guys aren't on the same page. And um, it's easy to highlight that. And the great thing about this defense is they'll listen to you because we, we tell them. We tell them honestly. We say, hey, this guy's a really good player. This guy's not a good player. When you're honest with players and you go in and tell them, hey, this is not right and this is right, this is doing it wrong and this is doing it right, they listen to you. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people think because of the, the pick six and the safety that all was great. There was a lot uh, missed there and a lot of opportunities where we ended up one-on-one -on -one that if one guy breaks a tackle, it's a touchdown. Um, and we need two people there. We need three people there. Jay Black, do you have a question? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, we got time for maybe a couple more questions. Uh, let's uh, let anybody jump in and uh, go ahead and open it up. Hey, Kirby, this is Connor Riley here. With George Pickens, what did you make of his first game? And with the history he has with Auburn, do you go about coaching him up any differently this week? No, I think we went through that last year. I mean, George is a, a competitive by nature. He's a fiery spirit guy. He's got to play with composure. We talk about that with all our players, not just George. Uh, it's got to be the same this week. Um, it can't just mean more because it's Auburn. It has to mean more because it's the next game. And uh, if he played well in the game, he's, uh, he knows what he's got to work on and continue to get better at. We point that out to him each day. Last question. Hey, Kirby. Hey. Paul Collins here. Uh, what's the status of Trey McKitty headed into the game and your evaluation on the tight ends from this past week? Uh, I thought Darnell, Darnell did a good job for having the first game jitters. Um, he, he, he handled his assignments well. He's got to continue to condition and get in better shape, uh, be more physical presence in the blocking game. Um, but he's, he's a kid that's coming along really well. As far as Trey, I'll be able to tell you a lot more after today's practice. I, don't, I can't say right now because we haven't seen him yet. Thanks, everybody. Stand by for players.